the Zoo Warlock for sure. All right. Well, that brings us to our next match. Language Hacker versus Muzzy. The bands are in. Language Hacker's Warrior's ban and Muzzy's Rogue is ban, which is uh, a pretty nice twist there, considering that Rogue doesn't get banned super duper often, but has been showing why it is a fearsome class, uh, especially in that previous series. Um, and so now we're left with two druids, Mage Priest and Demon Hunter Warlock. Which, uh, when you look at these lineups head to head, who do you think gets the edge, TJ? That one is tough. Um, be if only because I don't believe in Soul Demon Hunter. Um, I feel like Language Hacker should have the advantage. Uh, based on his lineup it, compared to Muzzy's when the bands are factored in. Um, but I don't believe the Soul Demon Hunter on paper statistics. And because of that, uh, I think it's this this one is, is even. I'll, I'll call it even. Um, okay. Soul Demon Hunter just feels like it's too one-dimensional. That it's, that it's win condition is too linear. And one thing, one thing that it's not accounting for you complete throw it off tracks and make it so that its win condition doesn't exist anymore. Um, like, talk, let's talk about the Druid matchup, for instance. An exotic Mount Solar gets a Silverback Patriarch, and you lose the game because of it. That happens way more than you'd expect uh, in, the, in like that matchup specifically. And that's just one example. Um, because you can no longer throw that 12 damage you've been saving up with base because a 1 4 taunt that came out for free got put in your face. So, um, if Soul Demon Hunter could take a win quickly against the matchup that it's supposed to be good against, Language Hacker's chances that really good. And maybe Girls this matchup's session. won. Maybe it hinges on this one. Nope, Language Hacker's going to go with Zoom first. Yeah, that makes sense. And this is the matchup that I think Language Hacker is really happy with on paper, as we have seen Zoo Warlock kind of crush Druids consistently. Uh, for a while now, for years even. Um, and it does seem like this is the matchup they want to specifically prey upon, given Druid's popularity. Um, especially for ones that are a little bit greedier and want to play like Malagos combo Druids and they have Moonfires to hold off aggression uh, and not a lot of other stuff. So it's going to game number one here. Language Hacker kind of debating his mull back and forth here. I like Spirit Jailer and Cult Neophyte. I guess Dark Lair is also one of the most impactful cards in the deck. Um, and so I, I like those three on paper, but do they kind of fit well together is another bigger question. Uh, the, the Spirit Jailer, not Spirit so much. Um, against some tempo matchups... Actually, let's take a look at his deck. Quick. Um, he only plays one Shadowlight Scholar, uh, so he doesn't have like the insane... Uh, like tempo follow up with a uh, spirit jailer into shadow light scholar. Also, this is not necessarily a tempo matchup. All right, well, he gets it anyway, but he was looking for a, a, a more impactful one drop. Um, um, so, he, uh, like, sometimes you keep spirit jailer even with no other follow up if it means that you have the chance of drawing shadow light scholar to win back the board, but throws it away for like flame imp or even expired merchant. Uh, slash hand of Gul'dan is sometimes some, something you could fish for. All right, there it is. Innervate wild growth in, into overgrowth. Yeah, but he's got the ramp is... start. Now it's about finding the follow up. But Colt Neophyte's going to put a wrench in that plan. I mean, yeah, that's why Colt Neophyte is really powerful right now. Um... It feels like a much more balanced version of Lotheb. <laughs> uh, Lotheb yeah. just, of course, being a 5-mana five 5-5 five, five version of Colton Neophyte, but scaling to make it cost 5 more is just really, really powerful. So Colton Neophyte seems to be right in that sweet spot. It's uh, surprising one of my favorite utility cards in this entire expansion. And now Muzzy's yeah. just kind of chuckling himself because his entire game plan has kind of been thwarted and... I would say that he's already in trouble here. Yep. I would agree with that statement. It's going to be a lot of damage, and Dark Lair, if he wants to play Overgrowth, is something that he's not going to be dealing with, which that's when things start to ramp up a bit, because Dark Lair being on the board opens up so many powerful opportunities uh, for the Zoo Warlock. 
Um, language Hacker, because of some of his tech cards, is not playing. Uh, he's only playing one Disease Vulture. He's playing like a Living Dragon Breath. This is, this is second kind of tech inclusion in, in the deck. So not the most insane follow-up potential with the Disease Vulture. Um, so less like, you know, contradictions. Raise Dead, or in this situation, because he can't play Raise Dead, he could like Coin Flame Imp and then uh, Life Tap, etc. But still a good good minion, very threatening minion. Now Muzzy has to make the decision of just Overgrowth again, completely accept this damage to get this these Mana Crystals online. Yep. Yeah, it's not pretty, but you got to do it because long term, if you just play a five drop, you're just trying not to die. And Zoo is really powerful at abusing that um, when they're ahead on board. Right? Like the Nightshade Matron is <laughs> disgustingly good against uh, the teacher bet. So uh, Muzzy has to try and capitalize off of the fact that he'll get double the mana crystals next turn compared to the language hacker. Not that it gets any easier, though, this Colton Neophyte. And Flame Imp. Actually, Language Checker hasn't even had a minion die, so he can't even play Raise Dead. No. I mean, if he really wants to, he can coin the Nightshade Matron, discarding the Flesh Giant, uh, and just going full tempo. Does he set up a two turn lethal that way? He pushes 7 puts on a 19 with 12, 13, 18 on board with Soulfire in hand. I don't know, Dan. This is a two turn lethal setup. I mean, he just needs Guardian wow. Animals, and Muzzy would be pretty safe. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that um, face. <laughs> but Bog Beam lets him deal with the Dark Glare, which is still reasonable. So yeah. you can Bog Beam, Hero Power, and then you'll have five so mana, which means you can play Teacher's Pet. Yeah. Then hope that your next card is either Guardian Animals or Overflow. And you get to make some massive board with Anubisoft defenders alongside of it. Right. Uh, but now make Language Hacker can trade trade in some Colt Neophytes. Oh, I mean, he also can guarantee Dark Glare back as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Trade in one. Okay, so this is actually a difficult turn. Is it? He's going to try and... So he's had two witchmen. He's had uh, the Dark Glare die, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, he was about to cast the, the Raised Dead, and I was about to say, huh, he wants both of these. And there they're both so demons, so they can play Kim with that Evan Lock. Pretty sh Can he get a Flush Giant down here? Flame will make it four. Yes, he definitely Life Tap will make it three, and then Corn. Yeah, he should be. he will be able to. Oh, okay. I mean, you can see Language Hacker's eyes widen. This is definitely an opportunity that he's looking for. Yeah, he can actually play another Cold Neophyte. Oh, no, he didn't get the Cold Neophyte. He can play another... Play him in? He can play everything. Oh, Dark Lair playing him. Actually gets some crazy amounts of mana. So now he gains four mana for it. Okay, he's like, you know what? This is fine. This is fine. Just maximize your giant and your nightshade mage. Don't get too fancy with it. Because if he traded his minions in, he wouldn't be able to push the damage. Yeah. And he just wants to push the damage. Yep. Wow. That's a turn. Yeah, That's a turn that of Hearthstone right there. Right. That was on five mana, by the way. Victory is yours. Yep. Dead on five. And yep. Muzzy concedes. And a round of applause for the Language Clapper. Nice. As uh, he is going to be up 1-0 in this best of five and getting the good matchup, getting the pretty good start. And uh, Druid, of course, having an awkward start. But you can see why Colt Neophyte is, you know, rising up in the, in the value in a bunch of people's mm -hmm. minds. The stock market of Hearthstone, Colt Neophyte is mooning at the moment. Yeah. Look at some of the popular decks. Druid, uh, Temple Mage also. You can shut off some of their big turns. Um, maybe not as effective as Druid because they can just wait a turn to go off with their stuff and it doesn't affect them that much. But a lot of decks in the metagame that really want those power turns on time.
So Cold Neophyte, love the card. All right. Well, that's going to bring us to our next intermission. We're going to take a few minutes and uh, get set. So when we come back, we're going to have Language Hacker and Muzzy, game number two. Stay tuned. It sounds weird. <laughs> I guess if I had to choose a Hearthstone card to ride on, I would choose Yogg Saron because things would be very interesting and I would like to see what would happen. I would probably choose Ayasaraga because it's been really long and I think it's, the art is very, very cool. Well, I would choose the Deathwing because uh, Deathwing is the, my favorite uh, dragon in World of, World of Warcraft. I'd want to pick something, you know, comfortable, so I'd go with like King Crush. <laughs> nice big dinosaur so I can crush all the other things in the carousel. Welcome back, everyone. Hearthstone Grandmasters. <laughs> I uh, I missed the countdown. I was like watching it, and we're on a slight delay, so uh, apologies there. But uh, human moment. We're live, live. It's not pre-recorded. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Game number two is about to begin as we have a uh, druid and demon hunter remaining for language hacker and Muzzy. Uh, took game one defeat on the Druid. It does feel like Druid is that class that could be the Achilles heel uh, for Muzzy in particular because um, you know they don't really deal well with that. Pound, compounding pressure uh, that Zoo Warlock and uh, Demon Hunter can can deal with, but at the same time, there's a reason why these, these decks are being brought because they're really powerful uh, in general. So even if they are being targeted, doesn't mean that they're uh, 
uh, gonna just keel over and die, guarantee. So we'll see. Going to get number two. Language Tiger's gonna turn to his soul demon hunter. Um, a really fun deck, actually, and I actually appreciate this variant of Demon Hunter that we have right now, given the um, how, how different it is from some of the tempo decks we've seen in Demon Hunter in the previous expansion. Yeah, it's very unique. Uh, and I, I mentioned it earlier, it's got a very linear win condition, uh, which is hit your opponent in the face with your face, uh, headbutt, so to speak. Um... But it does that very well, and it does it consistently. This is the deck that it might struggle with, though, um, because what it has trouble dealing with is a lot of medium-sized minions, which Guardian Druid can put out, especially with Exotic Mount Cellar. An Exotic Mount Cellar board is, fears, feels nearly impossible for the Soul Demon Hunter to get through, unless it's winning the turn that the, that the Mount Cellar uh, goes off, or... Um, it has like the per the perfect alignment of uh, removal with shard shard mystic pl with a combination of blade dance. So, we'll see. Uh, but that was kind of what I was talking about with the uh, the weakness of the the soul demon hunter earlier on in the day before we started this match too. Missed the one drop. Oh no! What a bummer. Yeah. Oh, ooh, mana burn is ah, ooh, that's nice. That's a pretty solid one. We t we already saw what Cult Neophyte can do now. Compound that into two mana crystals. Uh, this could be devastating for most. Especially given that Language Hacker could potentially throw this next turn completely into whack by using Mana Burn right here. Because he knows that the possibility is it's even more than just like the idea of stopping guardian animals. It's stopping wild growth, it's stopping coin uh, into overgrowth. Um, the stopping issue is a lot that of it, things. Right. The issue would be that he foregoes playing like mana feeder panther this turn, as well as like next turn. Like, does he want to not play the panther as well? I guess he could. So he could do he could do mana burn, spirit jailer, spirit jailer, and then hero power. The next turn he can just play Lord Keeper, Polka. And then on turn five, you can hear power and double Panther, and then draw just like the sociologist and the, the Skullical Dan. Um, so that's actually a pretty interesting line that he can take, and uh, no you don't way. really get to see it too often. Instead, it looks like he's gonna prioritize the tempo here with the Mana Fear Panthera. Okay, nice. I mean, this is pretty cool. Like, he knows that he'll have the draw because he has Lorekeeper Polkelt, which, I mean, <laughs> sociologist into skull into skull. Skulls are always going to come off the top once that's played, which means uh, you're you're just rolling. You're you're good to go. Um, right. so he doesn't really need the mana feeder pet there draw. So why why not just uh, disrupt Muzzy's turns? Sure, that's entirely reasonable. I guess I was thinking about how it would line up with the mana, um, because he would be drawing his second skull on six with yeah. that line i believe but uh he would be behind, he would be slower on his tempo development um and now he actually yeah. kind of has a similar opportunity where you can kind of develop the spirit jailer and the man of fear panthera uh because the problem with playing spirit jailer is you can't really play uh, the lore keeper and then play spirit jailer kind of defeats the purpose of it yeah that's sort of why I also felt like playing the Spirit Jailer earlier was a little bit better. But it doesn't really matter because it looks like he can time it whenever he wants to. Now, yeah, he finally... Yeah, Soul Drive and Shuffle in. Yeah. Now Muzzy can finally play Guardian. So, at place double Lake Thrasher. And didn't get one. Not that it's a huge deal, because he could still draw cards here, make a huge board with double and Dubasat Defender. So many contradictions. But it would have been nice to just have a nice, clean board state. But we gotta make do. Sands of time run low.
Yeah, I, I think I like... can get over the next turn, he's going to be in a pretty good position with how big this board is. Yeah, I'm thinking specifically about, like, what he wants to attack, what he wants to play around if, in case he's, like, trying to hedge against, like, Blade Dance, for example, or the uh, Soul Shard Mystic, which will deal three damage to everything. So I think that's what Muzzy's considering as well. Uh... A pretty tricky turn for Language Hacker. He could go for the simple plan, which is to play the Lapidary and then just, you know, brute force this. Jam that 5-5, five, five, deal 5 damage to the 5 Demons. health taunt. Demons. But he really also wants to kill this Twilight Runner. Um, and that requires either Soul Shear or playing Kane Sun Fury, which is also a little unusual to do. Uh, so this is definitely like a, a, a suboptimal scenario based off of how much power Drew's able to develop on turn four. That's kind of insane. The presence is actually created by that. Yeah, this is quite a lot of power. And yeah, Language Hacker just going to put the most power he can on the board. I actually like the Kane play that you mentioned. Like Kane then trade over the Twilight Runner and then value trade over one of the Anubisoft defenders. Yeah. he Language Hacker has a plan though right like i just I, the reason why is i'm scared about twilight runner drawing the card that really punishes hmm. language hacker which would be i guess in this case based off the knowledge of hand uh it would be a trade into like an innervate uh overgrowth into like a dominant rest of the game uh while yeah. demon hunter can't do much how curious yeah. Yeah, I think I like the trade, because if you ignore this lapidary, you're kind of asking to get punished by the Soul Shard Mystic. Okay, no ramp. Nature speaks to us. Stand the time run low. Like Jacker, not happy to see the Speaker Gidra. He was really hoping that Druid kind of whiff on this turn, but he drew four cards, so you're expecting him to have zero playables. Which is a little bit optimistic, to say the least. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, I don't understand that one. Like, <laughs> he's he's gonna have ramp, or he's gonna have something to play. Like, he's drawn through half right. his deck. Demons. Demons. At least he I didn't. I guess it was clap. like <laughs> it was like the best three mana. I think that's probably why he's a little bit yeah. You know, I really I just I mean, it's just like, <laughs> having wild growth there would have been like perfectly serviceable. Yeah, I, I guess. So I, you know, for the reasons yeah. I mentioned earlier, where you don't get through taunts well in the late stage of the game. Like, Kane is a very valuable resource. Yes. Just totally. to be able to ignore Silverback Patriarchs that come out from Exotic Mount Sun. So having to use it early is rough. But, ah. Yeah. I mean, at least he gets to put down this Spirit, this, uh, spirit Jailer. Our Lord Keeper, Polkelt, uh, can come down reasonably now. He's had a Good amount of soul fragments in the deck. Sociologist militia will be um, quite impactful, especially if next turn if he can go something like soul shear, then Lord Keeper pull Kelt, shuffle some more in, then guarantee those those uh, powerful draws of uh, the sociologist with skull. Um, but you know that's a, that's a lot of time where you're taking damage and allowing development from the druid. So don't know how how powerful it's going to be. We'll see. So yeah, in the meantime, Muzz can just kind of develop however he likes to. He has the broomstick this turn, which is pretty good. And most importantly, he needs to kind of free up the hand space so that overflow can be impactful. He also has double interface, so next turn he can play the Sarah Unleashed, continue to dump, and then play the overflow. So things are looking pretty good for Muzzy this game. I'm kind of having trouble seeing a line of play from Language Hacker that will be fast enough to not one not die because he's staring at 11 pressure on the board um and then two how does he actually generate the damage to kill muzzy huh so the mystic plus a soul shear and hero power should clear off most things that aren't like King Mukla off of the teacher's pet. I grow impatient. If he wants to, he can also greet it a little bit, play the mystic, and then 
Lore Keeper and try to draw Sociologist next turn. I don't remember how many Soul Fragments are in the deck, but it doesn't it's seem just, like it's enough to answer everything. It's two Spirit Jailers, right? All right, but he drew one, I believe. And he would and he would discard one with the Shard Shatter Mystic. Right. So it wouldn't be, wouldn't be... Oh, no! Ooh. Just, yeah. uh, I mean, it's... Uh, the effect from the Educated Alec really doesn't matter. It's just that the fact that it had four health means that he can't have a clean board here. Um, right. Which is just kind of annoying, might especially since he's at die. 10 health. Um, I mean, this is... Eight, nine damage? Was he one damage off lethal? Yeah. I kind of like the uh, the Yasera play here uh, for Muzzy. It sets up a really nice opportunity for him to draw cards. Allows him to hand dump. Shuffles more innervates into the deck when the Elec dies. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> that actually makes it so he draws portals less often, which is kind of weird. I don't know. He has Overflow. He's got Wild Growth. He's got Twilight Runner. So much stuff in his hand. Draws cards. He, he should be fine. He should be a okay. And yeah. Language Hacker draws Chaos Strike. That should be it here because I don't think he has any way to counter this. Skullical oh. Dan. Let's see. I mean, might as well. He drop warlock. Something to stabilize? Nope. Soul fragment. Alas, awful. So it, it, it removes a discount. Oh no. No playables. And that's gonna no be it now. for game number two. Two quick ones. Muzzy gets the win. I can't tell. This is some elaborate performance art coming out of Muzzy that he's trying to clap for language hacker like i <laughs> is there like something more happening here tj that i'm not understanding no i think i think muzzy just really likes to be enthusiastic he said i interviewed him he said that uh, i asked him like why he in season one and two of great match in 2019 he was always just so stoic and never reacted to his wins or his losses and he said it kind of got boring after a while like wins and losses because he, he wasn't fully invested in them and when he gets emotionally invested in things, it, it makes the wins more fun. Uh, and so he said, "Wow, he, imagine like, that!" He said he consciously started to like pop off more and like get himself pumped about wins, even even like small victories. And so maybe yes. that's it. Maybe maybe he's not, you know, trying to you know uh, mock the language clapper. Uh, maybe he's maybe he's just getting himself pumped up. He's going to the Temple Mage game. You got to be pumped up when you're playing Temple Mage, Dan. <laughs> Almost as if people enjoy watching things that they're emotionally invested in, TJ. <laughs> Whoa, crazy concept. Weird. Yeah. Will be the end of uh, you. Now all we're missing is for Muzzy to start trash talking. Uh, I mean, he does kind of light trash talking. It seems like Muzzy and Saiyan kind of have thrown a little bit more caution to the wind about that stuff. You know, Saiyan with some uh, fighting words over the Americas. Grandmasters, in terms of telling him how uh, he feels like the field's been soft lately. He didn't say that directly. I'm just kind of paraphrasing and summarizing no, he did. what he was implying. He said it directly. He, <laughs> he said, NA is free. Yeah, it's true. Uh, at least for these players, right? With If they feel like they don't have to try their hardest, so to speak. That's kind of what they're, that's what's implied. And again, we're, we're adding color to it. They said different phrases. But I am curious to see if they can back it up long term, right? Because they can say all that, 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 that they want. But there are also some GMs that are taking it very seriously. You know, you know there's players who are like talking, tweeting about how much hours of preparation they're putting into all their lineups. And, uh, you know, one day that apathy can slowly creep up and punish you. But we'll see. For now, uh, Muzzy seems to be doing just fine. Mage versus the Demon Hunter. A matchup which Demon Hunter should be able to pressure Mage, and like Mage can freeze the board a lot, but a lot of times they can't freeze the face guaranteed. At least not naturally from their deck, and so if you can put enough pressure early, usually you can get in a position where you can kill them from hand. But Mage is also Mage. They, I mean, we've, yeah, they, we've called... They do mage things. <laughs> 
We've called so many mage decks in the past kind of like a scam mage where it feels like you have the win and then they just like pull out random cards seemingly from their behind and and then just like win the game. And you know, it's kind of like highlighted by cards like Puzzle Box and Yaxaron. But now it's like from one mana all the way to 10 mana, there's just shenanigans happening, TJ. I know. And even for a while, when we dodged the Puzzle Box and Mana Cyclone era, we still had it. It was dominated by Luna's Pocket Galaxy. <laughs> yeah. So either either they were scamming you one way or another with randomly generated spells from Mana Cyclone or with <laughs> just a bunch of free minions, essentially. So, um, yeah, Muzzy picks up uh, Cram Session, gets All to draw some cards here. Time. Uh, I'm pretty happy I, I, about it. Yeah. I, I kind of want to pick something a little bit more expensive. Um, I know that it seems counterintuitive since he already has like Shinvala and Mana Giant in hand, but one of the things that I talked All about is the, um, works the limited removal options for the Soul Demon Hunter, where they can move a board full of small stuff with Shard Shatter Mystic, or they can remove like uh, a board that has like two or three reasonably sized minions um so you, you i feel like you want to kind of hedge your bets against the shard shatter mystic and pick something a little bit heavier more expensive like the archmage instead of just keep plopping lab partners on the board because those aren't going to get you anywhere but i like the archmage choice Fair enough I, every time I've picked expensive minions, I think another one that I picked a lot was Violet Warden because I'm like, well, on curve, you can kind of like play a reasonably static minion that complements your deck. And then I kind of run into hand size or hand space issues. So I will hesitantly await to see if maybe this ends up being the right call. Okay. Frostbolt. Of Investing into the future, the Frostbolt is very powerful against a lot of the direct damage opportunities. Yeah, that could uh, be a pretty crucial tool later on to maybe shut off some healing from Aldraki Warblades or um, oh. like stall for one turn uh, for from the Soul Demon Hunter killing ah, you to be able to stick Man Giant. Uh, lots of things. Uh, very. Uh, first old card in the matchup because it shuts off is this old Demon Hunter's basically the only way to win. Tempo Shinvala here. Yeah. I mean, there's not really a lot of cheap cards to combo with, so Shinvala's not super useful um, until you pick up Sorcerer's Apprentice or a bunch of like cheap spells. So that makes sense, but Language Hacker pretty easily answered with just the Marrow Slicer. It's actually been a very passive early game here from Demon Hunter. Yeah. With almost no extension onto the board, no damage. Um, and that's not good. Usually that's a losing position for Demon Hunter because they're often trying to trade their health early and then pushing late. And it seems like uh, Language Hacker doesn't really have the ability to push very much right now. Okay, maybe the Adept can start turning the tides? Yeah, but you're tanking four more damage, you're playing a 5-4, and you're not developing too much. Well, I guess, I mean, I guess the 6 is fine. Uh, well, he still has to answer it. It feels like you need to be doing a little bit more, but honestly, right now, I just don't feel like he has the ability to do more. Alright, most likely double Mana Feeder Pinthar here, and just getting more on this. I guess he could go Twin Slice Spirit Jailer. Okay. This is fine. Sure. And I mean, the thing is, though, as much as this deck can sometimes feel like it's off to a slow start, it also can just pick up the pace and deal like 10 to 12 damage seemingly out of nowhere. If, uh, you know, you're not really careful, it can sometimes surprise you with the crazy amount of damage. Similar to kind of what uh, Midrange Hunter used to do, where like, you're like, okay, I'm at like 25, and they play a Savannah high main, and then the next turn you're like, oh wow, I'm Don't taking 15. Um, and then all of a sudden you're within lethal striking distance. So that's why this uh, Soul Demon Hunter, you know, it has a couple different play styles. 
uh, depending on the matchups. And this is definitely one of the ways that it's completely viable to go for, which is a slow, setup-oriented mid-range pressure deck. Yeah. I mean, you can see the damage starting to ramp up already. I grow impatient. Uh, in the hand. Um, but the, a tough turn from Language Hacker. Wants to try and test for this secret. I'm curious if Lord Keeper Polkelt is to play here, because he's just shuffled in every uh, soul fragment that he has in hand. He would be curving right into Soul Theologist. Knows that it's not Counterspell. Yeah, anticipating what it could be is like, well, <laughs> it's got four mana. What else can you really be doing? Uh, and he tests for Flame Ward. So good sequencing from Language Hacker. But now he plays the Lord Keeper. And he's setting up for the Sociologist Militia on seven. Okay, and so now Muzzy channeling uh, the deep, whatever deep spirit inside him that can optimize his play. I feel like when Muzzy kind of grabs his face like that and pulls it down, it's like, okay, now it's time you know, to, to get serious. Take care of business. I don't know if this is one of those turns, though, where there's much that you can dig deep in the tank to find. I think this is just a pretty simple set up a big thing. Interesting. And Forest Language Hacker to deal with it. Like, uh, evocation there, I think, was too much uh, hope. Uh, with right. six mana left, not much you're going to find to like be able to discount the mana giant enough while also dealing with the board. So, um, giving up the Frostbolt, kind of annoying. Right. But, you know, I think that was probably the best. The Best play he's going to make in that type of situation. Sure, fighting for tempo, right? Can't get yeah. too far behind. I think, I think I was tempted to lead off with magic trick, to see if anything could develop from that. Um, okay. Then he would have run out of mana to not play possible. Yeah. Then he would have taken extra damage. So Muzzy's running into. Yeah, he's running into like issues of like just not having efficient ways to spend his mana, uh, and has to like pick things up that generate cards to finally have an impact onto the board. Evocation number two is interesting, but it's pretty greedy considering he doesn't have Sorcerer's Apprentice. Okay, Combustion's oh. actually pretty solid. So it was Arcane Intellect. I think I want to just try and find Sources Apprentice. Like, now, for next turn. That's why I want to go for Arcane Intellect. Like, Combustion deals with the board, but it doesn't solve the problem of Muzzy having kind of these clunky resources at hand. Sure, I guess I'm, like, kind of concerned about getting to the point where you play Source Apprentice, but you're, like, within striking distance of dying anyways. Yeah. And I would like to avoid that if possible. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. I like the idea of also playing the Violet Spellwing right now. Okay, so Muzz. Still pretty slow development here. And wow, Language Hacker has all the stuff that he wants to do right now. Skullgold Dan was guaranteed because he played the Lord Keeper and now can draw it. One of the best things about Skullgold Dan, too, after the Lord Keepers, you don't draw the Soul Fragment. Nope. And it gets cheap militias. Or sorry, lapidaries. Yep. And Muzzy can, you know, pretty much count how much damage is possible. He does a second slice in hand. He knows Blade Bound Adept and Soul Shard Lapidary are in the hand. He doesn't know whether or not they're discounted because they could have been in the hand prior to it. Uh, okay. Or drawn naturally next turn if Skull, the other Skull was there. So. Mana Cyclone's interesting. Okay. Solarian can come down. Maybe Mana Giant 2? Yes. 
Guess he wants to double ray first, and then arcane missiles. Pretty good. Uh oh, he didn't kill off the 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 panthera. And still get another arcade missiles. Works nope. against me. Yeah, I wonder how big it is for his Panthera. It's more like maybe the fact that uh, Language Hacker just ha still has board presence. It's pretty significant here. Yeah. He also can play Power Creation and Manage Giant next turn and seek for that Tempo Swing, but not killing that Panthera is really annoying. Language Hacker has a lot of damage. Wow. Five from the Lapidary, four from the Adept, two from the Second Slice. And then four from the other twin slices. I grow impatient. So he's got 15 from hand. Uh, 16 if you hero powers. <laughs> Still not enough. But over two turns, absolutely enough. Right. I mean, there's other ways. That, yeah, over two turns because he still has Gladebound Adept and Kane. And he's using cards that, like, Muzzy knows he has. Hide behind you. So utilizing the Lapidary, the Cane, which he drew. Uh, Muzzy should know about the, the Adept as well, but things like the Slices and the, the Glade Bound Adept are harder to account for. So this is really well done by Language Hacker. Yeah, proper mana expenditure, good damage push, uh, utilizing information that his opponent knows against him. Uh. All right. I mean, he he, he doesn't yeah. have lethal from hand now. Uh, I feel like that cane's supposed to go face. Oh no, he does have lethal from. No, he doesn't, because his next draw is Marl Slicer. Oh, he's out of mana to do everything, right? He wouldn't have enough mana to do anything. Even if he does Twin Slice, Second Slice, Second Slice, that's 6, then Glaibon out is 10, Hero Power's 11. Right. He doesn't have a mana from Marslicer. He did not set up a two-turn lethal from hand, or, or lethal from hand. Yeah. He, he does have yeah, Blade Dance, right. though. But, like, he, he gave Muzzy a chance. Yeah, and Ice like, Barrier is actually kind of huge here. I, I just wonder if the two damage from the mana cycle mattered. Oh, uh, enough to trade over it with Kane. Warriors of the frozen waste. That's my question. Rise up. It's completely fair. It's too bad he can't hold on to Deep Freeze. Deep Freeze is Soul Demon Hunter Nightmare. Yeah. Uh, um. I... Yeah. So Lango Tracker gonna first test for counter spell. Clear. So just go face and right, and we know that the uh, lethal would have been dance. stopped anyways. Yeah. Uh, because of ice barrier, he can also uh, blade dance this. Yep. I think is going to be important to stop any kind of counter lethal opportunity from Muzz. <laughs> so this is going to be painful, but uh, Language Hacker still has Lethal presented. Plus some. Right, and now he's basically saying, like, please no puzzle box. Now Muzzy has... He has... Source of the Apprentice, Ray of Frost, and Power Creation as an opportunity right now. Uh, but they're not great. Yeah. Hmm. But, I mean, let's say he gets, like... Uh, maybe you go Sunwalkers? Yeah, no, you can't go Animated Avalanche, right? Cartoon Defender, potentially. 
On it to me, scribe. Is wait, I mean, is that is that the out? <laughs> Sources I mean, apprentice. Then you can play. Yeah. And then you get four spells if you hit a bunch of one mana spells or evocation. Uh, you or might puzzle be box. Able to... Yeah, puzzle box. But I'm assuming he's gonna like die. I mean, he, he might think that is out here. A better out is just clear off the board and then. Oh wait, yeah. He uh, um. He he has no guarantee of surviving without gyrocopter. Yeah, which makes that's, sense. That's the the big thing. He'd have to he'd have to hit the. At least one man off, or one damage off rather. Um, his draws the deck. are. Yeah. Draws guaranteed. Uh, but there's no damage left. Hmm. Uh, Aldraki Warblades. But he already has a Marl Slicer equipped. Um, outside of that, uh, he might have a Chaos Strike left, but I don't think he can get deep enough. Because he still has two Aldraki Warblades and a Shark Shatter Mystic. So he can't get down to two. So he's just going to put him to one. So you have one turn. Oh no, he's not gonna put him. Yeah, that's too dangerous. You're not gonna get that opportunity to attack with the wind for your minion. You can still rip Solarian Prime. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh! Here it is! Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Language hacker said fun! Oh! Oh no. Okay, Arcane Missiles can help. No, that's not the secret he's looking for. Puzzle, puzzle box! box! Oh! You got a puzzle box! How to wave! A wave! No! Oh my goodness! And he's buffing the Solarian Prime! And summoning minions! And destroying all of his minions! <laughs> And killing language hacker. Oh my goodness. What did I just watch? <laughs> card mage. Oh. The All funny right, so. thing about calling it card mage, TJ, it's not even true. It generates uh, random stuff. Oh, it's not oh, even really oh. about a deck playing cards. It's about playing the cards that your cards get. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I messed up. Language Hacker actually did, uh, played the Marl Slicer, so he ruined the Lord Keeper full kill. But, I mean, <laughs> he's got no chance. He has zero damage. This Wandmaker needs to pick up Twin Slice, and then he needs to get... Uh, which he didn't. Oh my goodness. And that was the only option, I think. He's got a Chaos Strike left. He has zero damage. Yeah, that tidal wave. He's got was hero power and a couple of Jackie Warblades left. Yep. Oh yeah, he, <laughs> <he's>... <laughs> All right, you play another one, right? You play Ashminster Slaring, get the spell power, yeah. and then you just play another Slaring. You have Prime. lethal. Yeah. I mean, it's targeted towards opponents only. Okay, two side quests oh. and a pyroblast. Oh, oh. and a fireball. Oh. To be patient. And a Nova. Okay. <laughs> I'm having fun, but language hacker is not having fun. Yes, there are thousands of people enjoying themselves right now, but there's one that is not. <laughs> I mean, and a, I don't want to kick a man when he's down, but imagine if he goes face with that cane eight turns ago. You don't pick the one. Uh, he, he wouldn't have had it, though, because of Ice Barrier. Nah, he would have, because uh, he was uh, five, one damage short the turn he played Glaivebound at it. And he, tr he threw the oh, Glaivebound out of into a gyro Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, it could have changed Muzzy's plays. Very hard to be results oriented in that situation, but when you're counting damage like that, um, you know, yeah, gotta push that damage. Be that sometimes. guy, but I gotta be that guy, Dan. 
Let's hey, be very you honest with to. ourselves, TJ. You love being that guy. Yeah, I love being that guy. Mostly because I like when language hacker, because he always does, sends me a message afterwards correcting me. Um, <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll put the I'll put the disclaimer uh, out that that's I'm, why. I'll TJ put the disclaimer has a out that I'm pick probably with wrong. language hacker. No, 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 no. Because what I'm saying is I'm probably wrong. Because I know that language hacker is going to watch this, and at the end of the broadcast, he's going to message me and said, "Actually, I traded because of this," and I'll be like, "God, I'm an idiot." So, oh, yeah, he, he was thought about that. He, he was decision. probably right. He thought about the decision for like a solid thirty seconds, right? It wasn't just yeah. like a auto trade. Have you seen yeah. some players? I mean, I also it thought very about deliberate. it for a solid thirty seconds. So, <laughs> yeah, it looks like language hacker is going to concede. Muzzy. Daylight robbery stealing game number three. But you know what? That is when the uh, infamous motto that has uh, since plagued esports uh, we take those. Yeah. And to be fair to Language Hacker, no matter what line he took, he wins that game 99.9% .9 of the time. So, just so happens that the point Gotta push that happened. damage. Yeah. <laughs> Where uh, he. Just got muscled out of the game the turn after he could, or the turn he was going to uh, set it up to kill him. So, unfortunate there. Uh, but, you know, that's sometimes it's how the cookie crumbles, Dan. Puzzle box comes out and you're just done for. So, um, I feel like that's happened at Language Hacker multiple times, too. Ah, yes. If we think back to the Harthies, the most prestigious award ceremony in all of esports, uh, exclusively for Hearthstone Grandmasters. One of the nominees for craziest moment was that series between Eddie and Language Hacker. I think it was Eddie and Language Hacker. Where like, right, Puzzle, Puzzle Box, Box was cast five times in a game, Slayer and Prime was cast four times in the same game. Alone, and Language Hacker lost. Yeah. That was uh his first foray into embracing the the power of the box. Well All right. we're going to game number four with Priest versus the Soul Demon Hunter. Uh, we will see if the Demon Hunter can get the win here. Otherwise, Demon Hunter would get swept if it loses this game, which would be an interesting conversation piece about whether or not uh, even Demon Hunter was just unlucky, or is it just not consistent enough at executing its game plan? But I think the, the, question, the answer to that question already has been uh, solved if he was able to push that damage, right? Versus not. Of course, that depends if Language Hacker can uh, you know, eloquently explain why exactly he traded uh, to TJ privately in a Discord DM. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a deal. If he corrects me, I'll publicly apologize and explain his reasoning. If he if he doesn't correct me, I won't tweet anything. And so you guys will all know. Business as usual. <laughs> there you go. Oh, right. all right. Well, um, depending on how he wants to play this, if he wants to go a little bit more tempo-oriented, uh, or uh, play a little bit more for the long game. I feel like Evasive Feywing is the choice most of the time here. Yeah. It's your best minion to play to start fighting back on the board. It's not exactly like a really clean minion to play against Demon Hunter, because while you do make them resilient against things like Soul Shear, they just play Marrow Slicer and they can just deal with it immediately. And it's not a minion that Priest interacts with particularly well because their hero power can't heal it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's about it's just, it's okay in this matchup, I would say. To get off of Draconic studies. Pretty good to just play. On three. Totally. Uh, language Hacker does have the answer, but uh, it looks like he doesn't really care about this for now. Uh, doesn't want to expend uh, twin slice, like, second slice in order to deal with this. He knows that Muzzy can't really capitalize on this because uh, he can't, you know, put an apotheosis on it. Um, but he can just pop a bunch of minions behind it, which you know still has power within itself. Just keep protecting with other minions, keep forcing language hacker to deal with things, but Blade Dance exists. 
Yeah, you can see that uh, this blade dance is just really powerful for that tempo swing. Uh, nothing too much to sweat. This looks like a much easier game so far for Language Tracker. Priest passing or just developing three threes, that's much more manageable than uh, three Solarian Primes casting Puzzle mm -hmm. Box. Language Tracker's got the curve too. Soul Shard Lapidary with Soul Fragment mm. shuffled in. All it up with the Leapdown Adept, pick so high five. Some uh, solid options here. Such a beautiful yeah, everything lines up really nicely here so far for Language Hacker. And it's up to Muzzy to really figure out the place to stabilize. Because Priest, you can constantly clear stuff, but they, they struggle with damage from the hand. Just historically. Except yep. for Mind Render Lucia, which can play a disruption role, but not really against Language Hacker's hand. They, they at the moment, suffer at from damage from the hand historically. Actually, I think it's only recently. Unless you're talking about the opponent suffering from the priest damage from the hand. Mind Blast. <laughs> I wonder. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was <laughs> an old deck, and I mean, my but, but outside of the combo, anymore. yes. Sometimes I miss Mind Blast. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Penance, instead of uh, kind of taking an easy value trade in hero power on his own, he, he wants to dump his hand, I guess. Which makes sense, because if he flips next turn, Language Hacker will have seven mana, which means Muzzy's hand is entirely unplayable for Language Hacker. Um, so it's a good move. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, so he's got a lot of damage. A lot of damage. C can, you make, can you make a read that it's Mind Render Lucia based off of that knowledge of what just happened? Like, your opponent just played Penance Demons. on a 1-1. One -one. If you do make the read that it's Minor Under Lucia, can yeah, you... What are you supposed to even do? Can you do anything about it? Perhaps? Okay. Say your thoughts the he got rid of Twin Slice. That was about as much as he could dump here. Right. Um, and now I guess it would gets... be like him not playing Glaive on a death to be playing his cheaper cards. And then the my render would make us so that Muzzy can't play anything. Yeah, no, that's true. Just play like Twin... Yeah, but... Yeah, I guess you could play like Twin Slice uh, or Chaos Strike. No, nah, because Chaos Strike might pick you up something that you... Right, right. Nor do you want to consume magic here either for uh, if you're Muzzy. Because uh, actually, it, I mean, maybe it, it draws a card for language hacker. It gives him a mana, like language hacker. Yeah, but it gets rid of the silence. Dance. It's true, but like, what kind of silence is he really looking for in this matchup? A taunt? I don't know. Just talking through it. Yeah. Oh wow! He actually gets to play the Sethic Veil Weaver, which means that. Oh my oh, gosh! What? Oh, imagine if Language Hacker draws. Okay, here we go. Time for some more Language Clapper. <laughs> I mean, that is. I mean, that's that's just that's just sad that for Language Muzi. Hacker, but awesome for Muzzy. I mean, that's so powerful. He has a curve now. <laughs> You know, Language Hacker doesn't even want to look. He wants to look at an empty TV screen right now. Yeah. <laughs> he tweeted um, yesterday about frustrations, how he felt like he didn't even, in his own words, get to play Hearthstone yesterday because it was like a, a series of really unfortunate pan outs. Yeah. Um, and to today, correct myself earlier, Muzzy didn't play the uh, Consume Magic because uh, I made the mistake of us thinking uh, Consume Magic was all minions. He could have dumped it on his own. 
on one of his own. Oh, you're it's right, actually you're only right, enemy right. minions. So he had wave of apathy, so he would have brought it back up and not been able to value trade over it and taken more damage. You're right. Possible, you're right. So um, smart to not play it. Fair enough. Sociologist just getting some minor tempo, and now Muzzy. Is Natalie Celine, but can uh, pretty much curve out the Demon Hunter here. The void is filled with many whispers. And then we, I mean, he knows everything that's going to happen here. He knows that Natalie Celine's there. He knows about the the Dragon Queen Alex Straza. And Muzzy's thinking if he should push for lethal. Which I'm pretty sure with the knowledge that he has of Language Hacker's hand, he should go for it if he thinks he's not going to die. He knows about the three damage on board. He knows about the Lapidary and the Chaos Strike, so that's another plus seven. So can and, and the Hero Power is six. But then does Language Hacker have the ability to generate that much damage on that little mana remaining? I don't think so. So I think that Muzzy should be heavily considered pushing face damage this turn. Yeah, because if he doesn't push face, he doesn't set up a two-turn. Right. It, the downside is, if Language Hacker picks up Blade Dance number two, I believe, Muzzy gets blown out. Ah, oh, he can't play that and Soul Shard Lapidary. He only has one fragment left. It's okay. I think he has to play this Mystic, though. Yeah. I grow then I guess Chaos Strike can find him, like Marrow Slicer. That'd be really powerful. Ooh, Ooh. War Blades. That's a nice way to rebound your life total. Yeah. Uh. All right, this is actually okay. a trickier decision than it looks right now. Yeah. Because if you just make an A, there's five power on board. You know there's a Soul Shard Lapidary, what? but you know that there's no Soul Fragment left. But do you want to take the risk of him being able to piece together 12 damage? One of, like, one of that mana having to be dedicated to a Soul Fragment, at least one mana? Blade bound add up to me, it's still not enough. Nazari? Nazari is sick! What? What? Oh my. I think Muzzy this time Language Hacker is going to go mm. for the full 360, TJ. That's my prediction. The, the full He's been doing 180s all night on clapping. the half pipe. While oh, wow. I mean, that's for the perfect score. The judges c can't really fault him on that one. Depending on his flawless execution. I'm I'm predicting the 360 swivel back into the concede because he has to actually take action I there. Grow impatient. Uh, he, and language checkers going in. Oh, no. Oh, no, Dan. All his damage. All right, here we go. Here we go. Get your, get your scorecard ready. Oh my gosh. Ah, he can even raise dead beforehand. He can raise dead. The one dragon that can change the entire landscape of this game because of the direct damage that Demon Hunter does. And it goes completely wasted. Scorecard at the ready. Oh, I'm, I'm ready, TJ. And there it is. Language Hacker instantly concedes. Oh. No ceremony, but a clap and round of applause oh. for Muzzy okay. to the All camera. Right. That one. That one was Woo. that Triple was a clap. Touchdown. Yeah. The, the first one from Muzzy, I was like, okay, I could have <laughs> bought that as Muzzy just hyping himself up. That was specifically for Language Hacker. That one was. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, wow. Uh, cheeky Muzz. Poor Mihai. Uh, rough series rough. of games for Language Hacker this weekend. He went a total of one and six in game score. Uh, I don't know if Language Hacker streaming tonight either for all those uh, Language Hacker subs.
<laughs> yeah. Nisa yeah. definitely unwind after that one. Those those really get you wound up, you know. And partially, as much as we're kind of having fun with it, it's because uh, Language Hacker cares a ton about competition. And uh, honestly, he's one of my favorite players to watch these days. And I, I hope he bounces back. Zero two is definitely a rough start. And I would definitely peg him as one of the players least likely to be put into that relegation bracket. But two players do end up playing uh, for that. So we do end up seeing, uh, you know, what ends up happening in that series. And it's a tough beat for language hacker. But, you know, the story also is Muzzy with a really nice win today. And as a result, with a win over Saiyan and a win over language hacker, Muzzy has now improved to a 2-0 score uh, and is in good position. Uh, so that leads us to our intermission half time if you will tj we're going to take uh, several minutes here so definitely go stretch and uh, get a snack maybe uh, take a restroom break and when we come back we're going to get series number three as we go to division b with firebat versus empanizado hello everybody and welcome to c 